Hey everyone, Happy New Year. Uh, the BCPS exam in 2025 has changed a little bit. Uh, it's similar to the uh, fall exam, fall 2024, which there was a significant change. So uh, if you haven't been keeping up on it, maybe you need to do recertification. Uh, maybe you've you know discussed it with somebody who's taken the BCPS exam you know in the past earlier in 2024 or 2023 or before that uh, the exam format some of the things have changed so I wanted to run you through some of those changes uh, so you're ready uh, and prepared to pass your exam this year. Here are the pass rates for the March and April 2024 uh, exam window. You look down at the bottom, that is the BCPS pass rates, and this historically falls in line with where the pass rates have been. Occasionally, BCPS has dipped below 50. Occasionally, I think it has touched 70, maybe once or twice. Uh, but again, the pass rates typically fall in the 60 percentage range. So that means this exam remains challenging, is very challenging, and I'm going to be interested to see uh, later in 2025, when the 2024 fall pass rates are released, I'm going to be watching that. Uh, if you pay attention to the blog at meded101.com, uh, I will be updating that when I find out those results have been released. So again, I would suspect maybe a little dip. Uh, so if that first time candidate pass rate 69 now, uh, historically, whenever there's been kind of an exam change, content outline change, uh, that has tend to fall. So I would guess first time uh, candidates, it's going to be in that 60 to 65 percent range. Uh, total speculation based upon uh, my past experience. I don't know. Maybe they made it easier in the fall 2024. Um, but anyway, we'll see when those uh, numbers come out. Basically, what I want you to take from this is the exam is very difficult. It's very, very difficult, much harder than the NAPLEX exam. I would say the questions are typically much trickier where there's you know two three four good options or reasonable options and you have to choose the best one so that takes some time that takes some you know practicing questions that takes some clinical experience uh, and obviously that takes some preparation and studying as well uh, to try to try to figure that out and you know provide the best answer to the question so about the exam, uh, 150 questions. That stays uh, stable, I think, from 2024, 2023 even. Uh, historically, before that, it was at 175. And when I first took it, um, not on recertification, but initially, uh, it was uh, 200 questions. Uh, recertification is shorter. Uh, so if you look at the BPS website, you'll see uh, the info on that. Um, but keep in mind, 25 questions are unscored. So if you don't feel like you got off to a great start, you're not very sure on you know the first five questions, 10 questions, keep in mind they may be unscored. So you got to keep your cool. You got to relax. You got to chill out. Um, make sure you you know, continue to work through the exam, be methodical, uh, and get the best answer you can to those questions and mark your answer in that, that fashion, okay? They... It's very true that, you know, maybe the first three questions, five questions, you don't know, but they, it is possible they may be unscored. So you got to keep your cool. Uh, typically, questions, multiple choice, one answer, four possible choices. That's the way we've designed our study materials. Uh, generic names, uh, so no brand names here. Uh, and then you get about 90 seconds per question on average. So again, doing practice questions, timing yourself. Uh, particularly if you know you're a historically slow test taker, you've really got to make sure uh, that you're setting a good pace because you get penalized if you don't answer questions. The content outline did change late in 2024, uh, so this is relatively new. Probably the biggest takeaway is there's going to be more uh, what I would classify as pharmacotherapy, clinical decision-based questions, which I'm an advocate of. I think that's what this exam should be about, you know, maybe less so on, you know, statistics and regulatory issues, that type of thing. 
So if you add up kind of these two percentages, you get to 72%. And, you know, this is really where the clinical knowledge is, kind of the decision-making process um, in cases and that type of thing. Uh, that's where all this comes from. And I would classify that as about 72% of the exam. So breaking down kind of the patient care specialty areas for fall 2025, uh, you can see uh, that we've got, you know, primary, secondary, tertiary areas, uh, and they break down those those percentages, as you can see there. With this said, uh, we've altered our study materials for 2025, um, edited, updated, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we followed this content outline, and I think that's a big advantage of, of our content versus others. Um, you know, many of the others just, you know, put out their education based upon specific areas and they don't necessarily tailor it, you know, to the specific patient care, especially areas that are on the content outline. And, you know, we tried our best to make sure that we match this perfectly. Uh, so you're not blindsided by something uh, on the exam that's maybe in study, not in study materials that you looked at. So again, we've done the work for you uh, as far as preparing yourself the best possible based upon the content outline. So that pharmacotherapy section, here's what I teach typically when you're preparing for this exam. Uh, be prepared to analyze uh, case scenarios, you know, brief case scenarios. And that involves basically recognizing when you would choose a drug and when you wouldn't choose a drug. So, you know, contraindications, box warnings, uh, why you would choose a drug because there's a compelling indication. Think of, you know, let's say bupropion. That's a great example to take. Okay, they've got a contraindication. Maybe they've got seizure disorder. Yeah, prob bupropion's probably not the best drug to select in that situation. But maybe they've got a compelling indication. Maybe they're looking to uh, quit smoking and they have depression. You know, so recognizing some of those clues within the case can be really, really important. Obviously, guidelines are important, recognizing, you know, major and unique adverse effects, monitoring parameters, you know, drug interactions, uh, genetic considerations. This is probably something that's been emphasized a little bit more over the years as we get more and more data uh, on pharmacogenomics, for example. Uh, I wouldn't, I typically don't recommend focusing heavy on dosing. Uh, that's a question I typically get asked. So, you know, could they ask you something about dosing? Okay, yes, they certainly could. What is the maximum dose of lisinopril? Uh, the odds that they ask you that, you know, in my opinion, are extremely, extremely low. Um, however, where dosing maybe comes into play, um, you know, think about things like, you know, anticoagulation, you know, maybe certain antibiotics in certain situations. Um, maybe there's, you know, boxed warnings for going too high on a dose. Maybe there's some geriatric dosing uh, recommendations from, you know, beers criteria. So think about some of those things. And obviously we tried to lay that out in our study materials. Some of those things that I think are really, really important to recognize um, when dosing matters. But that's often um, probably one of the more frequent questions I've, I've gotten is, you know, how, how, you know, how much do I need to know on, on dosing and stuff? And I would say, you know, for your average everyday drug, I wouldn't stress about it too much. You're probably going to know what a usual and standard dose is if you've been practicing for years um, in some of the, the more common medications. Um, but again, you know, some of the, you know, maybe higher risk situations, insulin, anticoagulation, uh, you know, maybe some antibiotics, that type of thing. Those are situations where maybe you'd want to um, make sure you got the dosing down. And many pharmacists will, you know, maybe know some of the dosing uh, quirks that way. Um, but that's just my two cents on, on dosing, which is a common question I've received via email. Uh, that fall content outline, I did want to touch on the 28%. Uh, we've got a couple of PDFs that are really good um, that will prepare you for those sections. Uh, they get you know, reviewed, updated, annually looked at, um, making sure we're covering everything. Obviously, I've uh, occasionally received feedback as well from candidates saying, hey, you know, this topic area wasn't really discussed in your study guide. You should probably put some more info on that. So um, again, take that feedback, do the best we can. Obviously, review the content outline uh, specifically. 
going into detail line by line, making sure that everything on that content outline uh, is something that's in our study guide and obviously helping you prepare. But again, don't ignore this section. Do not focus solely on pharmacotherapy. Uh, you've got to make sure you know some of the statistics and regulatory stuff uh, as well, which I think we do a nice job of preparing you for. So uh, our study materials for 2025, they have been updated. They are ready to go. We're up over 30 hours now uh, of video review course. Uh, we've got downloadable slides associated with that. So you can take notes, you can download, you can print off, whatever you want to do. Take notes on your, your iPad or your you know laptop. Uh, this is a PDF format. Again, we've reworked it, uh, edited it, make sure that we're matching what the current content outline is for 2025. Uh, we've got an online question bank. We are approaching uh, upwards of 2,000 practice questions now. Uh, obviously try to match that format of uh, the BCPS questions. And then we've got those additional uh, PDF supplemental resources, the statistics, the regulatory study guide, uh, some comparison tables as well. Uh, and we do have MP3 files as well of all the uh, video review course. Uh, so if that's interesting to you, helpful for you, uh, we wanted to add that. That was a, a request, I think, a year or two ago from somebody saying, hey, could you provide these as MP3 files too? Uh, and so we, we have done that. Uh, and then you can get a year or six month access. That studying period, I would say the overwhelming majority of candidates are in that three to six month range. Uh, when I took the BCPS exam initially, uh, I would say I looked at it probably four or five months out uh, that was adequate for me but i also uh, with the uh, clinical job i was working i also had more extended periods of time uh, to um, review and study when i initially took this exam so uh, again it depends upon your work situation you know maybe you're working 30 hours a week you've got more time um, maybe you can get it you know cut that down to three months instead but um I would definitely set a marker for you six months out before you want to take the exam and start looking at stuff anyway and saying, hey, okay, how much time do I think I need? You know, let's kind of develop a, a plan or a schedule, that type of thing. Uh, many people maybe been out of practice for a while. And maybe you, you know, haven't taken an exam for a long time. Maybe you're pretty nervous about it. Um, certainly, I've definitely had many candidates look at it, you know, a year out saying, hey, I'm going to take this within the next year. Uh, and plan and prepare that way too. So again, multiple ways to, to go about it. Um, for my recertification, when I took my recertification exam, uh, I would say I, I was probably more in the long, long lines of two months. Um, however, kind of at the time of my recertification exam, uh, I have been, you know, creating study materials and stuff every year and updating. So um, I feel probably more prepared uh, than probably your average candidate would be. Um, but again, kind of based on, on personal preference and, and, you know, what your feeling is uh, on how much time you need to prepare. With that said, uh, for most candidates, this is not like the NAPLEX. You know, your job for most candidates isn't dependent upon you becoming board certified. So relax a little bit if you don't pass the first time. I hear from people, I get emails uh, quite often saying, hey, I didn't pass you know, what do you think I need to do better, that type of thing. And, you know, I, I do my best to try to respond to those emails and uh, help those folks out as much as I can because I know it's no fun uh, to not do well on an exam and not pass an exam. So um, give yourself a little grace. It's a tough exam. You know, a third of people on average are going to fail this exam. And, you know, that's okay. You learned a lot in the process. You got better as a pharmacist. So that's a really, really important thing uh, too. Ultimately, we want to try to help our patients as much as we can. So here are some testimonials from our study materials. Uh, this one was LinkedIn was on LinkedIn was just fairly recently here in 2024. Um, but you'll note down below our review course is spot on, which is you know what we aim to do. We look at the content outline, um, which I think is different from you know other study materials that you may have for the BCPS exam. Uh, I go through content outline line by line making sure that I'm trying to cover everything that I think is relevant for preparing for the exam. So again, I think we've got a nice uh, track record, lots of testimonials, uh, and I think we can definitely help you prepare to pass your exam. 
So with that, happy studying. Um, for study materials uh, at MedEd101, you can go to meded101.com slash store, see everything there. Uh, again, we've got a review course. Uh, we do have question bank only options as well if you're just looking for practice questions and you're using uh, something else to, to prepare. Uh, so go check that out. If you have any questions, emails, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, shoot me a message there. Uh, otherwise, email is great too. I'm checking that all the time, mededucation101 at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening. I hope this helps you get ready for your BCPS exam in 2025. And uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you got any questions. Take care. Have a great day.